Oh, hello there. Welcome back to my channel. Great to have you here once again. Great to have you beautiful, well-adjusted, reasonable, level-headed people tuning in to watch and listen to my ugly mug. I'm so grateful, so, so grateful. I'm not so grateful for this though, not so grateful. I've been trying to avoid this, trying to move on, trying to accept the reality of the situation, but I just have to make a slight comment on what Kevin Hart has to say, because I think this might echo a lot of my feelings on this terrible situation going on right now with the Joe Budden podcast. As I'm sure most of you are aware, Joe Budden went and did exactly what Joe Budden has done for two plus decades in the industry but for some reason all the podcasting fans were utterly surprised when he decided to blow up his podcast fire one of his hosts on the show and completely disrespect the other one in a complete unfrequented need for self-sabotage i have no idea why he did it i have no idea where he went this far but we are where we are so one of the most important one of the most enjoyable and one of the probably the best overall hip-hop urban-esque podcast out there in the scene has now no more now it's a kind of shadow of its own self joe button has enlisted the help of ice and ish to fill in for rory and mal but the podcast as we knew to love it over the years is no more because joe button is incapable of sharing a wealth sharing the information or any number of things that kind of lie at his feet and of course loads of people in the industry have basically taken this opportunity to dance on his grave which maybe says a lot about how he conducted himself in a scene as opposed to the quality of the show i think joe's abrasive personality his need to be right his need to speak about everything and anything that happens in hip-hop and sometimes it's better maybe just to avoid the things and sidestep it has maybe led him to develop more enemies than he actually is aware of and one of those enemies who i completely forgot about was kevin Hart. If you're a big listener of the, or if you're a long time listener or a long time fan of the Joe Bannon podcast, you would have known that Joe Bannon had a little weird sort of tete a tete and a little bit of a grudge against Kevin Hart in the same way he did against Will Smith. No idea what basically started the beef, but whenever it was announced that Kevin Hart had a new deal with some big broadcasting company or he was involved in some public scandal, whether it's him crashing a car or being involved in a car accident or him cheating on his wife, whatever it was, he always took the route of being extra spicy and extra rude for no apparent reason. Now, for us podcasting fans, it was comp quite funny to see him kind of poke at somebody like Kevin Hart considering how big he is, but also considering how nice of a dude Kevin Hart comes across, it did seem a bit strange at the time, I'm not gonna lie. And I guess we had no idea that Kevin Hart actually listened to the Joe Biden podcast. He was actually aware of the show. So much show that it leads me to believe that he probably tuned in week in, week out because the way he was speaking about it, the way that he had some knowledge of who the guys were and what the situation was and how he was able to some, summarize it within two to three minutes but it does lead me to believe that Kevin Hart was maybe a bigger fan of the Joe Biden podcast than it's led to believe and it wouldn't surprise me if Kevin Hart was a fan of the show prior to Joe actually shitting on him on the show which is ironic considering how Joe likes to go on as if he's anti-industry when he has the entire industry locked in and tuned into a show but I guess now they've all completely gone and Kevin Hart made some really good points regarding everything that's occurred obviously with the Joe Biden podcast and basically what's led to its eventual downfall and I think his point regarding Joe's lack of leadership is something that I've kind of wrestling in my mind ever since they decided to you know uh, do away with the Spotify deal and decide to go quote-unquote independent it never really made sense to me why at any moment in time during the inception of the Joe Biden podcast network which I definitely do think was a reaction to what Charlemagne was doing with the Black Effect network as opposed to Joe Budden actually went into a launch network or it was a clever tactic for Joe Budden to ensure that next time he was entering into negotiation he had the opportunity to maybe get a ringer type deal where he could bring two or three or five different shows to the table if he's negotiating with a streaming platform and show that he's able to replicate the success of his show in some meaningful way in other shows. It never really made sense to me why when they started the Joe Budden podcast network there was never really any conversation around bringing somebody in externally to actually manage the running of the network day to day. Where whether that was a CEO, creative director or a program director, someone to come in and just basically be um, enlisted with running the network day to day and ensuring the shows on there are the best possible product when they are going out. So if there was somebody that they could come along who could really knuckle down and, and decide, hey, maybe actually going forward, the best option is maybe to start a sports show as opposed to doing the two female led shows they've got in the moment. Maybe it's to do a relationship show, maybe a show based on kind of helping uh, up and coming artists, wherever it may be, or just get something that could actually have the overall final authority on how that network actually runs would have actually given it a better 
better chance of succeeding and maybe that person coming in the external person could have avoided some of the issues that Joe's run into now where he kind of wants to be the head of the network but he also wants to be in front of the camera and to be honest Kevin Hart summed it up in a really really succinct way here which I'm going to play for you and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the other side always in the know mm. like there's never there's never a dark a dark circle or a door that can't be opened like I think the one thing that we've done very well and I'll say this on air you know I'll give this information for other people that are doing things with their friends with their brothers whomever in business a lot of these relationships get messed up when the relationship and business kind of cross lines and the one thing that I've always done to try to prevent that to the best of my ability, and I think I've done a great job so far, is give the information. Give the information, give the ins and outs so there's understanding. And if there are questions, we table them as partners, as a group, because no matter what, the machine is our machine. Regardless of my name or not, it's our machine, and I would never make my guys feel as if it wasn't. So for the life of me, this isn't a this isn't a petty moment. This is a real like this is a real vocal moment that I'm just taking the opportunity to make sure I say. This is why I don't get some of the Joe defenders out there or the Joe Avengers as I like to be known are basically saying that hey, um the guys Rory and Maul didn't have any rights to looking at into the books and getting a hold of the accounting and finding out exactly where the money was going and how much was coming in so that they can get a better idea what their splits would be because essentially they're workers. Cool. Let's, for instance, just say they are just employees. Forget the fact that they have a an agreement with Joe that allows them to be, I think, profit partners, right? So they get a split of the profits that come in via the deal so they don't get a salary, which it basically incentivize them to basically work harder and produce a better show, cool, whatever it may be. But let's imagine they're just employees anyway. And let's just say they both started within the early, let's say they started on the Joe Biden podcast, um, you know, under the 100 episode mark, maybe under 50. Because some people would argue, you know, doing a podcast, you don't get good until you do over 50 shows wouldn't you say just because they're your friends anyway regardless what contracts say regardless of what the actual positions are don't you owe your friends some level of transparency just because you started this thing together and now it's become one of the biggest podcasts within your space shouldn't you just give them the information just because they're your friends i never really understood that but let's continue and what see what kevin has to say does this man be vocal about so much on behalf of me my career my moves and everything and i don't care i shut up i don't give a fuck is what it is. You guys know I'm no stranger to negativity. I don't care about that. But I actually was a supporter of the progression of him and his podcast. From afar. I'm a fan of your growth. I'm a fan of what you're doing and the conversation behind it. That's dope. Yo, he's not doing business here. He wants to own it. He wants control. It's dope. To see you publicly shit on the guys that was with you, that's an example of poor leadership. That's an example of why you are where you are. Ouch. This is why. Here's the answer. Point blank. You want to be by yourself. You want to be King Dingaling. Oh. You can't do that. You can't do that. Wealth should be shared, not owned. Facts. So this is a shout out, man, to Rory and Maul. You guys were dope as fuck at that job. Once again, I was a fan of the fucking podcast. It's a sad day to see this shit end when you guys were on your way to what seemed to be higher levels of success. I don't sit up here and promote the negativity. Wish there was a world where you could work it out. But you need a good fucking leader that understands it's not just him. I don't think Joe has that. Damn. Hopefully they didn't just buy some shit. And unfortunately, however much that may hurt us as Joe Biden podcast fans, we just have to give it up to Kevin. He was completely right. 100% correct. And we all know it. We all know it. We all know it. And a really disappointing thing about this whole entire affair, to create a really good show is really, really difficult. To get a really good show, especially one that's maybe centered around guests, has a whole bevy of co-hosts, is very difficult to do. And when you find a great show, when you stumble across a great show, when you accidentally step on a great show that happens to involve your friends who you've known for years, who you have great banter and jokes with, why would you want to mess that up? Why would you want to chuck that away? Just because you were being greedy, just because you were unwilling to share the wealth, just because 
those who are unwilling to maybe meet their demands and it's really interesting to kind of figure out because if you're a long time listener to Joe Budden podcast you know how much how weird it was to hear Joe Budden defend DJ Khaled's sort of like you know shaky business practices when it came to his dealings with Ace Hood they had an argument I think or a debate when Ace Hood was on drink champs if I'm not mistaken and basically in the end um, Joe Budden was defending DJ Khaled's positions of not being willing to share information money opportunities with Ace Hood even though Ace Hood was arguing on his side of the things that he was instrumental in the success of We The Best back when it was a thing and Joe Budden was very adamant about defending Khaled's position which was very odd at the time but cool put it to one side you'd still say by and large DJ Khaled isn't rich or successful via only the things that he does for himself he's rich and successful because of the collaborations and the teamwork that he has with other people and along the way I'm sure he's going to have to maybe give up on some deals maybe take less money maybe take less exposure just so he can advance and be able to put out the work that he wants to put out even someone like a P Diddy who Joe Budden is obsessed with and calls maybe one of his mentors. He also is somebody that's been known to have some very shaky business practices in the past. But even him, at the level that he's at, at the moment, it's very unlikely that he's, quote unquote, as Kevin Hart says, king dingling on his own. He definitely works in collaboration, in partnership with different people. Just look at what he does with his vodka brand. That isn't even something that he created. It's something that he fronted. And over time, he then got more and more ownership, more and more control, more and more voice, more and more authority in what he does. And now... It's one of the biggest, you know, vodka brands out there that exist. So I don't know where Joe got this example or got this image that he has to be the Lone Ranger and he can't get his guys involved. It doesn't make any sense. And like I said, it would make more sense if it was just, you know, random strangers that he got um, in the industry to co-host a show with him. But people that you've known for 10, 20 years and this is how it ends. And maybe it's um, disappointing for me personally because you kind of, again, live vicariously through these podcasts. So you kind of see it similarly to how you would see maybe when you watch Entourage for the first time, right? Every dude kind of wants to have a social circle like that, right? This group of merry men that you kind of known for years and years and you basically take along the journey with you as you ascertain different levels of success. But part of the fun is taking your friends with you. Now, you might have fallings out and spats along the way, but you would never put in a position where you are purposely trying to self-sabotage the situation in order to get your friends off the books so you can keep more of the money for yourself because that's what it feels like to me it feels like joe purposely didn't want to reconcile or act as the boss in a situation and try and get them around the table to sort out the issue he wanted it to burn to the ground so that he can kick the boys out and effectively keep all the money and if you read between the lines and you hear what rory and mal had to say in their reaction video rory said towards the end that allegedly joe budden said to him that he was happy because now he's in a situation where he can pay ice and ish half of what he was paying rory so he's gonna get you know a cut price deal on these co-hosts who are also his friends who he can still have the good sort of banter with without having to give up most of the pie which is insane to think of when you think about the contribution rory and Mo have added to the show as kevin hart has pointed out so again it's disappointing as a fan it really is to see it where it is at the moment so far the update we have at the moment is that it looks like the video portion of the show is going to get her uh, posted on patreon only audio is going to go out on the normal feeds it looks like rory and Moore might be starting their own podcast and um, it looks like joe budden might have lost a cash app sponsorship because that's logo is no longer on the new episodes of the show anymore it looks like the whole fan base of the Joe Burnham podcast is completely turned on Parks because he seems to have Joe's balls constantly within his esophagus, which is disappointing to see. But again, not surprising considering he was the guy that said the show must go on and laughed when he said, I don't really care about the business because my business is straight. I don't care what's going on with those guys. Now a DM has been leaked of Parks allegedly going back and forth with another um, fan of the JBP where he basically accuses Rory O'Moore of being oligarchs and um, Parks and Savon and everyone else being the workers and actually the fact that Rory and Mo are asking for more information and asking for more details and what the books are saying is negatively affecting their ability to make money which is insane to think of it but hey what can you do so the Joe Burner podcast is no more it was a great run we had a lot of fun we had a lot of really memorable moments but unfortunately Joe's insistence on not sharing a pie has led to this place we're at now at the moment where now the Joe Burner podcast is dead RIP but honestly it bums me out man it's over it really does bum me out it's over but I guess it is what it is um lessons have been learned now going forward which I don't think lessons need to be learned i don't think most people would do this to their friends i think this is specifically a joe issue most people wouldn't make a 
hit podcasts with their friends and then when it comes to splitting a pie you know suddenly start being really picky about who gets what and how big their slices most people will just give it up to their friends because hey guess what they're my friends in regards to what the contracts say but the show's over i guess so it was great while it lasted but hey what can you do? Nothing lasts forever, I guess. Nothing lasts forever. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think Joe Biden was out of order? Do you think Rory and Mal do have a uh, reason to ask for the books? Do you think there's a future for the Joe Biden podcast? And are you also dancing on Joe Biden's grave the same way Kevin Hart is because you want a fan of him all in? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Peace out.